Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Patricia Byers? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing by this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the crimes, then offer my analysis. Patricia Margaret Byers was born in the late 1940s and lived near Brisbane, Australia. She married at the age of 19 and went on to have two sons. The family lived in Darwin, which is in the Northern Territory. Her husband died unexpectedly when they were out shooting, but it's not clear exactly what happened. Patricia's eldest son was also killed unexpectedly. He was riding as a passenger on a motorcycle driven by Patricia when some type of collision occurred and he was decapitated. Patricia moved on after these tragedies. She worked as an insurance agent. In 1981, Patricia met a man named Carl Gotchkins. He was a marine engineer who frequently traveled for his job. The two became romantically involved. Carl left his wife and two daughters for Patricia the following year. In 1988, the couple moved into a house owned by Carl, located in a town just south of Brisbane. In 1990, Carl traveled to Singapore as part of his job. When he was there, he met a sex worker from Thailand, and they became romantically involved. Carl was planning on leaving Patricia and traveling to Thailand for a while to be with his new lover. He was scheduled to depart on a flight from Australia to Thailand on Friday, July 6. Three days before the scheduled flight, on July 3, Carl's employer dropped him off at his home. This is the last time that 51-year-old Carl would ever be seen. It wasn't unusual for Carl to be gone for months at a time for his job, so at first nobody really thought anything was out of the ordinary. Neighbors spoke to Patricia about Carl. She told them that he had run off with a woman from Thailand. Despite his busy traveling schedule, Carl typically communicated with family members every once in a while, but now nobody was hearing from him. This was unusual, but they didn't suspect anything terrible had happened. People just assumed that he was living in Thailand. He was distracted taking care of other business. Patricia continued with her life pretty quickly. She became romantically involved with a man named John Victor Asquith. He was also in the insurance business. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. On April 13, 1993, Patricia and John were on a 24-foot fiberglass boat that was owned by Patricia. They were in Moreton Bay, near Brisbane, about a mile from Stradbroke Island. There was some type of mechanical problem with the boat. Patricia told John that they should spend the night on the boat and figure out what to do about the problem the next day. The couple had dinner and drank alcohol. After having sex, they went to sleep. Not long after this, John woke up with a tingling feeling in his arms, legs, and back. He noticed that there was blood coming from an injury to his forehead. John walked around the boat looking for Patricia, but was initially unable to find her. He saw a 22 caliber rifle that looked a lot like one that Patricia kept in her bedroom at home, except somebody had cut the barrel and the stock to make the weapon shorter. John eventually found Patricia at the bow of the boat. She claimed that she had been hit on the neck and suggested that they had been attacked by pirates. John contacted the authorities and they started an investigation. They determined that John had been shot one time in the head with a 22 caliber firearm. Amazingly, he survived. They were unable to find the 22 caliber rifle that John had seen. Patricia told the police her story about being attacked, but she was not injured. Later, Patricia asked John to change his story and say that he never observed the rifle on the boat. As the investigation continued, the police discovered that Patricia had forged John's signature on five life insurance policies. The last policy had been registered just eight days before the shooting. The total value of all the policies was $270,000. John's neighbors found pieces of a 22 caliber rifle in a river. The police examined the pieces and determined that the wood in the stock matched wood shavings found in Patricia's basement. It looked like whoever had cut the gun down in size had done it 
in Patricia's home. This did not look too good for Patricia. Patricia Byers was charged in connection with the shooting. She falsely accused John of using the rifle on himself as part of a conspiracy with her to commit fraud. I guess Patricia felt a lot better about risking a conviction for fraud than risking one for attempted murder. The jury didn't believe Patricia's story. She was found guilty in September 1994 and sentenced to 12 years in prison. At this point, relatives of Carl started wondering if Patricia was responsible for his disappearance. After all, she tried to kill John. Again, Carl was the marine engineer who disappeared in 1990. Patricia said that he ran off with a lover in Thailand. Carl's family contacted the police, who investigated. Here's what the police discovered. Carl had intended to leave for Australia for Thailand on July 6, 1990, but he was not planning on being gone forever. His employer received a suspicious typed letter, supposedly from Carl. The letter said that he was taking a job in Southeast Asia. It was a sudden opportunity that he needed to take advantage of quickly or he would lose it. He asked his boss to send his gear and mail to Patricia. He then went on to talk about how magnificent Patricia was. He said, quote, Patricia has been great, and maybe I've made a bad decision. I feel bad, but she is smart and good-looking. I can't see her being left on the shelf, unquote. The letter ended with Carl wishing his employer well. The police discovered that Carl never made the flight on July 6th, or any other flight out of Australia. They contacted his lover in Thailand. She told them that he didn't arrive. She received a phone call from a woman with an Australian accent who said Carl would not be visiting after all. Three weeks after Carl disappeared, his house was transferred into Patricia's name using documents that appeared to contain his signature. In addition, his signature was on documents giving control of his financial accounts to Patricia. These accounts were now active. Patricia was using them. The police discovered that all of the documents had been forged. The police searched Carl's house. They didn't find his body, but they did find other evidence that was bad news for Patricia. There was a typewriter that matched a letter sent to Carl's boss, as well as droplets of dried blood on a wall. The DNA was matched to Carl. Around the time that Carl disappeared, Patricia purchased a new bed. This made it seem like something lethal happened in the bedroom. The police believe that Patricia murdered Carl sometime between July 3 and July 7. She was charged with murder and went to trial in 1999. Patricia Byers was found guilty and sentenced to life in prison. Patricia maintained her innocence for many years. She suggested that the police were biased against her. In 2016, Patricia was transferred from a prison in Queensland to a prison in South Australia where the rules were different as far as parole. A law had been passed in South Australia in 2015, which prevented killers from being released on parole if they did not fully cooperate with the authorities. It was referred to as the no body, no parole rule. This presented a problem for Patricia because she denied responsibility for Carl's disappearance. Patricia told the authorities that she was ready to confess. Here's the story she provided about what happened to Carl. On a day in early July 1990, she met with Carl, and they went for a walk. Everything was good for a while, but then they started arguing around 6 p.m. Carl was sitting by the Logan River with his legs hanging over the edge as Patricia went back to her vehicle and retrieved a machete. She walked up behind Carl and struck him with the machete. He fell into the river and disappeared forever. Investigators found Patricia's explanation to be dubious, it didn't explain the blood found on the wall in Carl's house or why she bought a new bed. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. Patricia was convicted in connection with attacks on two men, the attempted murder of John and the murder of Carl. But some people believe she may have had other victims. For example, both her first husband and her eldest son died unexpectedly. Considering Patricia was sentenced to life in prison, I would be surprised if the authorities are motivated to investigate those older deaths. If Patricia was responsible for any wrongdoing before killing Carl, she managed to get away with it. Item number two, 
Why did Patricia Byers murder Carl? At first glance, it would appear as though she was upset because he was leaving her, but this doesn't explain her massive forgery effort and why she tried to kill John about three years later. I think the motive might have involved two parts. Her discontentment with Carl's choice to leave her for a sex worker, and an opportunity to get his money. As far as the rejection component, Patricia should have known that Carl was at risk for leaving the relationship because he left his wife and children to be with her. But the prospect of being abandoned was still painful for Patricia. In the letter that she wrote to Carl's boss while pretending to be Carl, Patricia left a clue regarding her feelings of rejection. Again, she indicated that Carl made a bad decision. She was smart and good-looking, and it didn't make sense for her to be unwanted by other men. Patricia's pain was so intense that she could not resist putting self-aggrandizing statements in her fake letter. She was trying to convince herself that she remained desirable. Carl's actions did not reflect her worth in the dating market. As far as the opportunity for money component, I think that Patricia wanted to turn Carl's rejection into a positive. His plans of leaving to Thailand to be with a lover gave Patricia the perfect opportunity to murder him under circumstances where no one would notice him missing. In the fake letter she wrote, she talked about how the job that Carl was taking was too good for him to pass up. I think this was an analogy for her own feelings. She was talking about herself. In her estimation, the chance to kill Carl was too good for her to pass up. Item number three. After getting away with murdering Carl, Patricia decided to kill her next lover, John. In preparation for the murder, she forged five insurance policies and cut a rifle to make it easier to conceal. She probably selected a boat as the location to attack in order to eliminate the risk of having witnesses and to make it impossible to disprove her story about pirates boarding the boat. It's not like the police were going to find pirate footprints in the water. I think this also could have been a matter of cleaning. If she murdered Carl in her bed, which she probably did, given that she purchased a new mattress right after he disappeared, she probably wasn't too happy about the cleanup. All the mess of the blood everywhere, she wanted to make sure that didn't happen again. Under most circumstances, boats are easier to clean for this type of situation. When Patricia shot Carl, the bullet disintegrated upon hitting his head. Some fragments still penetrated, and caused permanent deformity to his head, but he survived. Many terrible statements can be made about Patricia's qualities as a romantic partner, but nobody can deny that she knew how to leave an impression. John's survival disrupted Patricia's plans. She was hoping for a more homicidal outcome. In her attempt to improvise, she made several mistakes and was quickly identified as being responsible. If Patricia had not attempted to kill John, she would have never been caught for murdering Carl. Moving to my last item, number four. What is a potential personality profile for Patricia Byers? Patricia has not really said a lot in prison other than in her effort to get parole. Not a lot is known about her personality, but here's a theory based on the little information available and on the typical personality traits observed in other well-known Black Widow cases. Patricia may have had mid-range openness to experience, low conscientiousness, high extroversion, low agreeableness, and mid-range neuroticism overall, but with extreme facet scores on both ends. On the high side, she had no impulse control and was angry. On the low side, she was calm under pressure. Patricia was manipulative, sadistic, cold, callous, envious, and fixated on symbols of wealth and status. Her desire for material items was insatiable. Despite benefiting financially from Carl's death, Patricia felt compelled to strike again less than three years later. Like many manipulative killers, Patricia's interpersonal skills were only successful in the context of romantic relationships. Men who were with her did not see how dangerous she was because they were distracted by romantic feelings. Outside of romantic relationships, she failed to deceive anybody. For example, the authorities were able to detect her attempt to get parole by lying about the details of the murder. It was painfully obvious that Patricia did not understand how other people perceived her. Now moving to my final thoughts. 
The case of Patricia Byers could be summarized in this way. A bewildering insurance broker, beleaguered by her beau and boy's baffling demise, bonded with a bold builder. But when he chose to break the bond, she brutally bumped him off and buried his body. After a brief break, her burning bloodlust to butcher backtracked, but this time she beset a boater with a bullet-resistant skull, who bravely battled to bind her to prison. Those are my thoughts on the case of Patricia Byers. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.